Hello, my name is John Wigley. I'm a past co-maintainer of Emacs. Nowadays, all of the work and mailing list traffic is handled by Ellie Zaretsky and Lars Ingebrigsten. And I just wanted to give you an update of what has been happening and what is soon to come in Emacs development. So I spoke to Ellie and he gave me the lowdown on Emacs 28, which is the next big release to come up yet. Uh, he says that we hope to release this soon. Pre-testing has not yet started, but maybe looking at the first quarter of next year. The biggest feature coming in Emacs 28 is going to be native compilation. And this will make some Emacs code two to four times as fast, depending on what kind of Lisp you're running and how much of your Lisp code uh, is just Lisp or makes calls to primitive functions. There were previous JIT attempts. Um, some of them still live on in, in development branches, but they were found to not speed things up too much. Um, the version coming in Emacs 20, 28 has much better results than these past attempts, but it should be noted that it has some side effects. Uh, one is that natively compiled files are going to be system dependent, so they can't be included in any distributions the way we do now with .elc files, since those run on any platform. This means that you will need to compile those files for your own machine. Uh, sometimes, depending on how the compilation process goes, it could vary by processor. Um, and it requires you also to have the right compilation environment. Um, this means that you may need tools from the GCC tool chain that aren't installed as part of the default. So you will maybe have to do some work to set up the right compilation environment for your platform. Natively compiled files are also kept in a separate directory. Um, there are some issues having to do with recompilation too. So there are certain changes, which if made to the Emacs source code between releases may require you to recompile all of the natively compiled files that you had compiled previously. Um, also, the file names of compiled files that get installed have hashes on them, depending on the Emacs that they were built against. So Emacs should be able to detect when recompilation is necessary, but it may be difficult for distributions who want to know what all of the build files are going to be in advance in order to prepare um, a, dist a binary distribution for that, for that platform. So these are all little wrinkles that we're going to discover and have to work out as this functionality comes out and starts getting used in lots of different uh, distributions. Another feature is that uh, Cairo is now being built with by default, and this is one step further toward better support for emojis. If you build with Cairo, you will get all of the emoji sequences defined by the latest Unicode and in full color, the exact same as on your smartphone, and it works on Mac OS as well. There's a new mode, but it is off by default uh, called context menus mode. And this gives uh, menus that appear when you right click somewhere in a buffer, but now will make it easier for other modes to define what those context menus should look like. So that's sort of making that support um, have less having, having it less custom in each module that implements that type of behavior. You, they can now do it through this context menu facility. Uh, tab bar and tab line have received many enhancements. Uh, so there's new commands, new variables. There's quite a large number of changes. So if you like those modes, if you use them, then you should be happy with what's coming. There is a command. Now um, a command can be marked as being specific to a mode so that if you're not in that mode, then when you press meta X, it won't appear in the tab completion list. Right now, meta X is a full population of every interactive command known to Emacs. But in many cases, unless you're in a text mode buffer or a LaTeX mode buffer or some programming language mode buffer, a lot of the commands that might be presented to you today are irrelevant to that buffer that you're in. So commands can now specify in their interactive declaration which mode they're specific to. And in that case, they will only appear in the completion list for that mode. In fact, only be available in that mode to execute. There are going to be uh, transient input methods. And what this means is that right now with Emacs, you can hit a key sequence to change your in, uh, input method to say Latin one or to Arabic or Hebrew or some other language so that you can start entering text using that input mode. Um, but transient input methods will allow you to switch to an input mode temporarily. So if you're mostly writing in English text, but you want to insert one Greek letter, you don't have to switch to an input mode that has Latin and Greek letters. You can just switch over to a Greek input mode momentarily, enter in the Greek letter, and then come back to your default input method. 
Show parent mode will be enabled by default in Emacs 28. So that's the highlighting of parents whenever your cursor is uh, on or uh, near a closing parent or an opening parent, for example. We're also going to be having have a non-GNU ELPA. So there will be a ELPA repository, just like the ELPA we have today, except it will have packages in it that have not gone through the same level of copyright assignment requirements as the GNU ELPA. So non-GNU ELPA will make it easier for packages to get into a repository that is managed by the packages.el that ships with Emacs. Um, there's going to be a repeat mode uh, added to Emacs 28, a uh, repeat mode.el. What this does is when you turn it on, when you enable repeat mode, then certain commands, which are executed by key bindings like control X U for undo, will allow you to just keep hitting that U, that final letter you used for the command to keep repeating that function. This works today already for things like macro repetition, control X E where you can just keep hitting E to repeat the macro as many times as you like, but that was a custom feature just for macros. This makes repeat mode uh, accessible to uh, most commands. The project.el package has dozens of new commands, so check the documentation there to find out what's going to be new in project.el. And there will be shorthands for list symbols supported in the Lisp symbol reader. And this means that for packages like S and F that have a whole bunch of really short named functions that might pollute the namespace, those functions now can be implemented behind a prefix where the symbol reader can be taught that there is a shorthand for that prefix. And that way it'll only apply for that, for the use of that package. Um, and then finally, e work on Emacs 29 has just started. I don't have any details to report on you there, just to say that now the ship is moving on to the next release after, and Emacs 28 has a release branch and is getting cleaned up and ready for release. And that is the technical summary of what's new in Emacs. Thank you.